20,000 years ago, this spot where I'm standing was covered with thousands of feet of glacial ice. And as those glaciers receded, they left behind broad U-shaped valleys like this one. Nowadays, this is a wonderland of streams, lakes, and meadows, all ringed by 3,000 foot high rock walls. I'm Josh Cripps, and in this episode, I'm exploring the wild beating heart of California's Sierra Nevada. I'm in Sequoia National Park, and this is the Miter Basin. Most people hear the word sequoia, they think of the tree. And true, when Sequoia National Park was created in 1890, it was specifically to protect the giant sequoia trees. And for good reason, General Sherman, the largest tree here in Sequoia National Park, is actually the largest living single organism on the entire planet. But Sequoia National Park is so much more than just big trees. In conjunction with its sister park to the North Kings Canyon, Sequoia comprises one of the largest roadless wilderness areas in the United States. And what that means for those few people who are willing to use their own human power to explore this landscape is that the opportunities for solitude, adventure, and meaningful experiences with nature are unparalleled. But of course, to have those experiences, you gotta put in the work. So this is where the journey begins, the Cottonwood Lakes Trailhead. It's uh, getting on towards sunset and I've still got about six miles to hike, so I better get to it. But before I do, I need to get ready for the trail. Shoes, hike, sunscreen, apply, bag, heavy. Yoo-hoo, I'm all set, so let's get moving. in the forest now about two hours maybe four miles or so and it's a lovely forest a lot of lodgepole pine this pine I'm ready to get out of the forest and see something a little more expansive man life sucks give me some views already <laughs> All right, off this way to find a lake to camp for the night. It's freezing. I popped up over this ridge back there and this wind, man, this whipping wind came out of nowhere and it is colder than a marmots took us in the dead of January. Well, actually marmots took us probably pretty warm even in the middle of January, but look, okay, in case you were curious how windy it is, look what happened to that tree. It's getting blown sideways. Well, I think I found my space for the night. Oh, a good campsite is found, it's not made. And with this wind picking up, I really wanted somewhere nice and sheltered. I'm enclosed by a bunch of rocks and trees here. Not too close to the water, at least 100 feet away. And uh, that's previously disturbed, so we don't have to pick up a bunch of rocks and smush a bunch of brush. You can see this is just sandy, it's flat. It's gonna be a great campsite. My fingers are freezing, so I gotta get my bag off, get my jacket on, and it's time to get some dinner made, get the tent set up, prepare for a long, restless night of sleeping.
Cottonwood Lakes, man, what a perfect place to spend the first day of my first Sierra backpack of the year. The real destination for this trip is much deeper into the backcountry, a place called the Mitre Basin. And to get there, it's gonna be half on trail, half off trail, and the first obstacle of the day is right there behind me, New Army Pass. Well, here I am at the top of New Army Pass. And from here, you can so clearly see Mount Langley, which at 14,026 feet, it's almost as big as your mom. <laughs> now, Langley was named after Samuel Pierpont Langley, who was one of the first astronomers to try to measure the surface temperature of the moon. I think he used an instrument called a cheesometer or something like that. But as beautiful and imposing as Mount Langley is, that is not my destination. Instead, if you follow that ridge line down to the left, you'll see a series of peaks out there. Those ring the Mitre Basin, that's where I'm heading. All right, made it, Mitre Basin. Mitre Basin is a grand cirque full of lakes and 13,000 foot peaks. Now I've never been here before and that's one of the most exciting things as a photographer is that sense of discovery when you come into a new place. So the best thing to do now is get down into that basin, find all the little nooks and crannies, explore the lakes, explore the streams, see what's looking good, try to get some compositional ideas and then wait and see what happens later on today with the light. Yeah, it's getting on close to sunset. The sun's just about to drop behind the local horizon and the winds have finally calmed down enough to allow a little bit of a reflection to form right here in this beautiful little bend in this stream. And this is everything you could ask for as a photographer. You've got curves, you've got beautiful reflections, you've got leading lines, of course you've got magnificent towers, wonderful dappled light and beautiful clouds in the sky. This is absolutely heaven for a guy like me. Now, as you can probably tell by the sort of squashed pumpkin look of my face, it's just before sunrise. And I'm out here exploring the basin in a little bit more detail. And this morning I'm being treated to that wonderfully rare delight here in the Sierra, which is clouds at sunrise. And so there's already some nice, soft, diffuse light pervading the basin. And we have some pastel colors in the clouds. It's the sort of, these are the sort of conditions that these are the kinds of conditions that are Bleh. what was i going to say oh yeah these are the sort of conditions that allow for spotlighting and dappled light and that diffuse beautiful glowy light spreading across the landscape that's going to allow me to enjoy photography as the morning wears on and last night's sunset was so beautiful and so extraordinary in every direction that i more or less used up all of the compositions that i had already scouted except for one as you can see those first early morning sunbeams are starting to break through from the clouds and light up the mountains behind. And this enormous monolith you can see right here is the subject for the photo that I wanna take this morning. So I better head on back and get in position before that light totally explodes on that face. You can hear the water flowing in the creek behind me. And in any normal year, this entire area, all of this red rock would be covered by a rushing cascade 
of white water. But this year is such an extreme drought year. Some parts of the Sierra only received 15% of the historical average in terms of the precipitation and the snowpack this previous winter. As you can see, even though it's incredibly early in the season, it's not even mid-June yet, this stream course is almost completely dry. Normally you wouldn't expect to see it looking like this until September or October. And that low water level has pretty dire consequences for the Sierra Nevada because it greatly increases the chances of wildfires. However, I will say that one tiny, tiny silver lining of this extremely low amount of water is that there is not a mosquito to be found. And normally in an area like this, you would be swimming your way through clouds of those little bloodsuckers. The Miter Basin, like so much of the Sierra, is made out of granite. And while it's tempting to think that granite is granite is granite, the number of different kinds of textures and colors and forms that the granite can take is really nothing short of astonishing. And here, I've discovered something really special. The granite has taken on this incredibly rich, deep rose color, and it's shot through with all of these fantastic cracks leading down into this pond. And those cracks are forming perfect leading lines, which create a flow into this pond and up towards that hulking castle of rock beyond. And I'm gonna use my ultra wide lens to really emphasize that effect of the cracks flowing into the photo. It's gonna create an image kind of like this. And now to get that little bit of extra special sauce, all I gotta do is wait for the morning light to splash across that face. Together, Sequoia and Kings Canyon contain about 800 miles of maintained hiking trails. But when you come to a place like the Miter Basin, the travel is essentially cross country, where you get to pick your own route and you get to pick your own way. And that might be a little intimidating at first if you've never done it before, but the rewards for doing that are fantastic because you end up with such a personal, meaningful experience where you stand in a place like this and you can only speculate how many other people have ever been right here. After the spectacular light that I had last night and this morning, it would be an easy thing to pack up my gear and head on out of here, calling this a photographic victory. But I've given myself three days to explore the entirety of the Mitre Basin, and that gives me plenty of time to do the thing that is so important to photography, which is scouting. Wandering around and seeing what cool stuff there is, where are the great views, and checking out all the wonderful places, like this magnificent spot right here, Sky Blue Lake. this spectacular place. This is Iridescent Lake. And not only does it sit in a spectacular alpine basin, you've got the Corcoran Pinnacles, you've got LeConte, and you've got the Mitre, for which this basin draws its name. But the water here is so clear and so contaminant-free that it looks positively tropical. Been on my feet now for the last six or seven hours, and I'm feeling kind of pooped. It's time to head back to camp, rest and relax a little bit before the sunset hits. I'm back at camp, but it's actually been quite impossible to relax because this stormlight and this scenery 
It awakens the primal photographer in me who cannot rest. I have to shoot, I have to shoot, I have to shoot. And with conditions like this, these reflections, these channels, those mountains, those clouds, who could resist that siren song? What a challenge it is to wrench myself away from those meadows and those streams. I find my creative spirit in need of a little bit of stimulation, so I'm going somewhere different, to a little lake just above my camp where there should be fantastic reflections of those pinnacles across the way there. Is there anything finer than seeing a mountaintop glow at the end of a long day? I don't think so. Well, it's my final morning here in Miter Basin, and the day has dawned without a breath, without the barest hint of a glimmer of wind. And because of that, the reflections are absolutely flawless. The past few days have been almost overwhelming from a creative standpoint. The amount of sheer beauty and photos that have occurred have left my mind and my heart feeling full and overjoyed. And because of that, this morning, there's no intense need to do photography, but rather simply to wander through the basin one last time, letting it say its final goodbyes. Thank you so much, Miter Basin and Sequoia National Park for this immeasurably beautiful adventure. It's time to pack up and hike for most of the next two days to get back to the trailhead, which when you think about it is a pretty extraordinary thing because to paraphrase Bill Bryson, when you move through a landscape on foot, the scale changes dramatically. You know, a mile is considerable. Two miles is an hour of your life. 10 miles, that's impressive. And 30 miles, man, that is an incomprehensible distance. And in addition to the magnificent places it takes you, that's one reason that I love backpacking so much, because it forces you to move through the landscape at a much slower pace. And it's not until you really take that time to really immerse yourself to understand what makes a place tick that you begin to build a deep, meaningful relationship with it. So for all of you out there, I can't encourage you strongly enough to strap on a backpack, grab your camera, and head out for a hike. Thanks so much for watching. This is Josh Cripps signing off. Join me again next time as I continue to explore and photograph our beautiful planet.